In this video, I'm going to elaborate uh, a little bit on the physical meaning uh, and the interpretation of operators in quantum mechanics. And in particular, we're going to discuss a very important class of problems that appear throughout quantum mechanics, uh, that is uh, so-called eigenvalue problems. Uh, to uh, see how they, what, they, what they are and how they arise, let me uh, first write down the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, the canonical time-dependent Schrodinger equation, but um, uh, with the, specifically with the time-independent uh, Hamiltonian. So physically this means that the potential in which our quantum particle is moving is not time-dependent. And uh, actually most problems we're going to see are fall into this category. So it's a very reasonable assumption. So that neither the mass nor the potential are time dependent. So in this case, it turns out there is absolutely no need uh, to deal with this uh, complicated um, differential equation, partial differential equation that involves the time derivative. So the time dependence can be sort of factored out of the equation in a very uh, straightforward way. And this is accomplished by uh, performing uh, separation of variables. So basically what we can say is Let's look for our solution in the following form. So the full, the full wave function is going to be a product of um, some time independent piece, psi of r, and uh, this exponential, which is sort of left over from the plane wave. So this psi of r does not have to be a plane wave if uh, the potential um, is, exists, but it is not a plane wave if, if there is a potential, but the time dependence sort of uh, remains the same. And so if we plug in this ansatz um, uh, into the uh, Schrodinger equation, so we're going to have in the um, left-hand side the derivative with respect to time, uh, psi of r, e to the power minus i energy t over h bar. So I should mention that e, of course, corresponds to the energy. And so since, uh, you know, this uh, a lowercase psi of r does not depend on time, we don't have to differentiate uh, this part. We're going to differentiate just the exponential and just essentially by construction we're going to get in the left hand side um, e psi of r and this exponential on the other hand the right hand side uh, since uh, there is nothing time dependent there uh, simply reads uh, the hamiltonian acting on uh, the uh, position dependent part and uh, the, exp the exponential is also here, but it's sort of irrelevant in the sense that the Hamiltonian doesn't see it. So the Hamiltonian only uh, involves either derivative with respect to spatial coordinates or the potential, which is just multiplication operator. So we see that both sides of this equation contain this exponential, and so we can just cancel this exponential, and we're uh, left with, uh, let me just switch the uh, order in which these guys appear. So uh, we are left with the following uh, equation h uh, acting on psi of r is equal to e times psi of r. And this is what is known as uh, time independent Schrodinger equation, or stationary Schrodinger equation. So this category of problems where an operator acting on a vector in some space reproduces the same vector multiplied by some number. Uh, so this category of problems are in math are called uh, eigenvalue problems. And in the context of this mathematical theory, uh, psi here represents what's known as eigenvector. Uh, Let me write it. And E is uh, uh, an eigenvalue of the corresponding operator. In this case, this operator is Hamiltonian. Now, let me tell you from the outset, we shall discuss it in more details later, uh, that the physical significance of these eigenvalues is in that they determine the possible outcomes of experiment that actually measure, in this case, energy. So uh, we know that, for instance, in classical physics, if I were to have some potential well, so let's say this is my V of, a, v of X, and there is some potential well, just one example uh, of problems that we're actually going to study. So if I had a classical particle, I would be able to put a classical particle with any energy in this well, and it would just oscillate between uh, the two uh, turning points uh, if there is no friction uh, and I can do so for any uh, value of energy. It turns out that in quantum mechanics it's not necessarily so. So Well, it's not so. And uh, the, uh, uh, the range of available energy is limited in this case. So what I would have is a discrete so-called discrete spectrum by which I mean uh, possible solutions to this equation. So these uh, levels, so let's say E1 or E2, uh, are going to come out of this eigenvalue problem naturally. 
So we see that an eigenvalue problem for the Hamiltonian arises naturally uh, from the uh, original Schrodinger equation. And as such, it becomes uh, a very important independent, in some sense, equation of quantum theory. And actually, oftentimes, when we uh, say Schrodinger equation, we actually refer to this uh, H psi equals E psi, not to the original one with the time derivative. And furthermore, uh, so eigenvalue problems also uh, appear for other operators in quantum theory. So it's very important. And uh, we should know at least a few basic things, basic properties of such uh, eigenvalue problems and uh, the operators involved in these uh, eigenvalue problems. So uh, we don't have time now to go into comprehensive theory of this, mathematical theory, which could be in principle a subject of a, a year long course. So therefore, I will just emphasize a few things uh, that are really crucial for the future and also introduce uh, some notations and terms that are important. So one such important thing is the notion of a Hermitian operator that is defined by the following relation. So let's imagine we have an operator A acting in a space of functions psi of R. So uh, I'm not going to define precisely mathematically what this space is. But I'm, you know, we should just think about uh, wave functions uh, that describe the properties of our quantum particles. So uh, one can define a Hermitian adjoint operator A dagger to the operator A by the following relation. So the left hand side of this equation is essentially uh, identical to what we saw in the previous video when we defined uh, uh, an average uh, or an expectation value of an oper operator A. It's an integral over the entire space of psi star, let's say our wave function, uh, uh, times uh, the action of our operator A on psi. And the operator A dagger sort of is, uh, moves from uh, the right to the left and now acts on the function which is a uh, complex conjugate. And so if the two uh, uh, expressions are equal for any psi of r, then uh, we have found the Hermitian adjoint operator. And an important uh, uh, class of operators that appear in quantum mechanics are called Hermitian operators. And they're characterized by uh, the fact that uh, their Hermitian adjoint is equal to the operator itself. So th they are called Hermitian. The importance of the Hermitian operators manifests itself if we look at their properties, uh, the properties of their eigenvalue problem. Uh, so in general, if we have an eigenvalue problem for an arbitrary operator, there is no guarantee that its eigenvalues are going to be real. So uh, in the context of quantum physics, this would lead to a bit of a problem because, uh, well, let's say if we have a wave function which is described by, let's say, psi sub a, and we want to take to measure the expectation value of this the quantity corresponding to this operator a, so we will calculate this average uh, value and we're going to get, if A is complex, we're going to get an expectation value which is complex. And it sort of, in most cases, doesn't make sense. So, for example, if we measure energy of a particle, we certainly don't want to get I, uh, the measuring constant I. We want to get a reasonable number that uh, has sort of its counterpart in classical physics, which does not know about complex numbers. So uh, what I'm saying here is that if we want to describe uh, physically reasonable quantities, so we want uh, these operators to give rise to real eigenvalues. So this would make sense. And uh, the Hermitian operators have uh, this property, exactly this property. So the uh, eigenvalues of Hermitian operators are all real. So another crucially important property of the eigenvalue problem for a Hermitian operator is that uh, its eigenvectors, these uh, solutions psi sub a of r to this equation, uh, form a basis in an appropriate space. So that is a space where our uh, functions live. So for instance, in the context of quantum physics, these are going to be wave functions. And um, of course, I should mention that the statements I'm making are not mathematically rigorous statements. So if you want uh, to see a precise definition or a theorem, so there is, of course, a uh, very rich mathematical literature on the subject, and I would encourage you to look into this. But at this stage, I just want to give you an idea about the properties. And so the property that I'm presenting here is that essentially, if you have any relevant function psi of r, which has something to do with our problem, uh, and this function sort of lives in the space where our um, operator acts, so then a set of all eigenvectors of this operator, which in principle can be either discrete or uh, continuous, in which case I would have written an integral, even both. 
So, but in any case, any such wave function can be represented as a linear combination of the eigen functions of the operator E. And uh, this has very important consequences, as I said, in quantum physics. Now, uh, going closer to quantum physics and further away from sort of mathematical statements, let me just summarize things that really are important in the context of quantum mechanics. So the first statement here is that physical observables, essentially things that we want to measure in quantum mechanics, are described by a Hermitian uh, operators, sometimes also called self-adjoint operators. So I should mention that there exists uh, a subtle uh, difference, actually mathematically, from between the Hermitian and self-adjoint operators, but um, it involves rather complicated math, and uh, in the framework of this course we can just uh, consider Hermitian and self-adjoint to be the same thing. But if among you there are some math uh, aficionados who want to know the difference, uh, you know, ask this question in the discussion forum and I would be happy to uh, elaborate on this. But um, anyway, so if we uh, have uh, identified a quantity of interest, our observable uh, A, and uh, identified an operator uh, associated with this observable, so eigen then we, are, we, we need to solve the eigenvalue problem for this operator. And uh, the uh, available eigenvalues, they determine uh, possible w values that actually can be measured in experiment. So also let me reiterate a very important fact we just discussed in the previous slide, and we're going to talk a little bit about this in the next video, namely that the solutions to this eigenvalue problem, these functions psi sub a of r, form a basis in the space where, where our wave functions uh, leave. Uh, which implies that any wave function uh, describing a physical uh, state of a system can be expanded uh, as a linear combination of these uh, eigenvectors. So the last comment, uh, but not the least important, that I'm going to make relates to the interpretation of these uh, coefficients, uh, c sub a, the complex numbers that appear in this uh, expansion. Uh, as a matter of fact, actually, this is probably the most important take-home message that I would like you to take out of this uh, slide. So imagine that uh, we have an ensemble of identical quantum systems, which exist in exactly the same quantum state described by some wave function psi that we expanded in our uh, basis of these uh, eigenstates. And let's imagine that we're going to perform let's say, three identical measurements of the identical uh, quantity A. So we want to measure A in exactly the same way with exactly the same kinds of systems. So uh, the weird thing about quantum mechanics is that even though everything is the same about these systems, we're actually going to get, uh, strictly speaking, generally three different results. So there is a chance some of them will be the same, but there is no guarantee at all. And um, the probability of finding uh, a system in a certain state which sometimes is referred to as a collapse of a wave function into a certain eigenstate. So this probability, let me call it uh, W sub A, is equal to the uh, absolute value squared of the coefficients uh, in this expansion. So this is the probability. So uh, in, this, in this example, again, so what, what we can say uh, for sure, is, the only thing we can say for sure is that all these measurements are going to result in a value of A that belongs to the spectrum, that is, to the set of available eigenvalues of the operator E. But which particular value is going to be measured, we don't know. We only can say which is more likely, and we can quantify this uncertainty, but this is maximum we can do. And so this um, principle is actually very important in quantum mechanics, and uh, we're going to use it uh, later in the course very often.